Hello everyone, uh, my name is Paweł Wieczorek. Uh, I work for uh, Samsung R&D Institute Poland and currently I'm a member of release engineering team for uh, Tizen GNU Linux distribution. Uh, daily release engineering tasks uh, require a lot of uh, activities with uh, embedded devices. That's why we want to um, simplify those uh, activities as much as possible and today I would like to share the outcome uh, of our efforts so far. Uh, I'll begin with short introduction to uh, what we do and to what um, our Linux distribution actually is. Then I will present uh, the previous efforts and review them shortly. I would also like to share with you the idea uh, for the new way uh, of our rather refreshed way of uh, interacting with remote embedded devices uh, describe the hardware and software aspects of the solution and share a short roadmap of future plans we have and summarize it uh, all together at the end. To begin with, uh, the GNU Linux distribution that we use, Tizen, uh, and use and develop, uh, is uh, targeted mainly at embedded devices. It uh, consists of standard uh, components like uh, GNU toolchain uh, for building all the packages, uh, Linux kernel obviously, uh, Wayland display server and Enlightenment Foundation libraries uh, or EFL for short. The target for uh, this Linux distribution are mainly embedded devices such as mobiles, uh, wearables, uh, TVs, uh, fridges like uh, Samsung Smart Hub, and also from uh, April this year with the release of Tizen 4.0 uh, Milestone 1, IoT devices as well. But before uh, Tizen goes to the uh, products, for example, Samsung products, uh, the platform has to be developed and all the changes that are made uh, to this GNU Linux distribution go through release engineering teams. Uh, Release engineering teams take care of the continuous platform development, which means that we release often to fail as early as possible. Uh, we uh, have at least uh, one snapshot per day with all the uh, mm, latest changes. But before these changes get, uh, get merged, uh, there's of course a QA step. Uh, so that we make sure that no new regressions are found uh, in the software, that uh, the software does not require uh, higher power consumption uh, since we focus mainly on embedded devices and so on and so forth. And even though uh, we are uh, really grateful to the developers who provide uh, internal package tests, uh, these are unfortunately not enough and we have to um, do the QA step on the actual devices. But uh, having all those various embedded devices uh, uh, at each desk uh, is not uh, a simple task and uh, not uh, uh, a convenient solution. That's why uh, it's much better to have them in a remote location and just access them whenever they are, uh, whenever they are necessary. Uh, this uh, attempt at solving this problem has uh, several pros. Uh, for example, when there are some target devices uh, that have to be stored securely, like prototypes, uh, it's much easier mm, to mm, have them in, in safe storage. It also requires much less effort from the developer as for setup of these devices and uh, maintenance. Uh, and they can be better utilized when they are shared uh, between various uh, release engineering teams around the globe. Uh, not only uh, the local ones, but uh, also uh, by the engineers at HQ or uh, different uh, R&D institutes. Uh, that's why we wanted to simplify all tasks related to activities uh, on the um, target devices. And that's why we came up with uh, MOOC Spice an open hardware project that we are currently in the process of integrating 
in our uh, testing laboratories. Uh, but we uh, but we will uh, go through the all all the details in a second. Uh, a MOOCSPY board, the same as I've got right here. Uh, once it is connected to the target device that it will control, like the Raspberry Pi 3, for example, uh, requires only two connections, uh, only two interfaces to the outside world. A power supply, of course, and the uh, Ethernet connection for the whole communication. This way, uh, scaling up this solution is as easy as attaching another uh, dryad, as we call them, a combination of target device and controlling board. Mm, of, so uh, scaling up is as easy as connecting another dryad first to power supply and then to network switch. It's the only str uh, strict constraint that uh, uh, limits the number of uh, devices that we can test on in a single testing laboratory. Uh, and using uh, this piece of hardware allows us to unify uh, the whole environment, uh, not only for Raspberry Pis, but also uh, for other ARM-based um, single board computers like Odroid, or even mobiles like uh, Note 4 right here. But before we'll go uh, through the aspects of this piece of hardware, let me uh, review uh, former efforts for having remote access to the target devices. A software one, and um, currently an industrial standard for maintaining uh, laboratories, testing laboratories, is a solution by Linaro. Uh, and it's LAVA, which stands for Linaro Automated Validation Architecture. Uh, it's a server that uh, automates deploying operating systems onto target devices and supports not only uh, physical but also virtual ones. It allows running boot, uh, bootloader, and even system level tests, although sometimes some additional hardware is required. So it's not a pure software solution per se. Uh, but Lava, uh, uh, even though it's a great solution, has some drawbacks. For example, uh, it requires stable connections uh, between the target device and uh, test server. Uh, the SSH is preferred. Uh, so it uh, does not cover all the use cases when uh, we have to check uh, how, for example, system recovery uh, works on uh, intentionally damaged device. Uh, some examples of uh, Lava users are uh, Debian uh, distribution, uh, AGL, uh, automotive grade Linux uh, from the automotive world, uh, but also um, Android uh, is tested using Lava in the main uh, Linaros uh, laboratory. Probably the most popular user of Lava would be Kernel CI project. Uh, which recently um, passed uh, over uh, five, uh, three million, three and a half million boots, uh, and still verifies uh, recent kernel versions on uh, actual hardware. So Lava uh, was the software uh, attempt at solving this problem, and Linaro has the history of. Uh, Having to uh, having trying to solve it at hardware level as well with uh, Lava LMPs, uh, these boards uh, allow to um, extract interfaces from the uh, devices under test from the test boards uh, outside of them, so that it's much easier to connect uh, all the interfaces to test server. However, uh, this approach was uh, dropped by Linaro and lessons learned uh, from this attempt were described uh, in linked article. However, uh, at Samsung we thought that we could uh, give another try to create uh, one of those boards, to recreate one of those boards, uh, specifically, uh, specifically a micro SD card demultiplexer, uh, which means 
that uh, that would be a, a piece of hardware which allows to share the access of uh, two storage device, two micro SD card actually, uh, between test server and device under tests, so that um, it can be easily used for deployment of the operating system and then uh, for booting uh, on the actual target device and performing tests and so on. Uh, that's how we came up with uh, SD Max board around uh, 2016. Uh, which is uh, open hardware project uh, and only open source software uh, was used to uh, design, develop and uh, produce those boards. Uh, everything uh, related to the SD Max board uh, is uh, available at the uh, git.tizen.org uh, linked on the slides. We uh, already know about uh, few people who tried to recreate the concept with much success. For example, a resin IO company uh, cloned uh, the design and used it uh, in their uh, hardware testing lab, uh, creating uh, the AutoHut board, which stands for Automated Hardware Testing, and is also uh, available uh, at their GitHub. Uh, however, uh, these uh, approaches uh, share um, common issues. For example, um, protocol errors uh, on the prolonged usage of USB subsystem uh, under Linux. Um, these issues uh, are not easy to trace. They uh, occur uh, very rarely uh, and we uh, have not uh, yet found find the solution. Uh, for those. That's why we took a step back, uh, we went to the, back to the drawing board and came up with another idea. But uh, before we uh, started designing a new solution, uh, we knew that uh, some, constraint, uh, some constraints uh, have to be taken into account. So first of all, we focus only on replaceable media so that if uh, it goes down, if it is damaged, then we do not lose the whole unit, but simply replace uh, the storage and can go on. We also knew that there, are, uh, there have to be no single point of failures uh, in the system, so that uh, failure of just one device will not cause failure of any other one. Uh, and uh, taking a lesson uh, from both Linaro attempt and our SDMOX uh, board, we knew that there uh, has to be absolutely no USB involvement from the test server side. Since we were back at uh, designing, we also thought that uh, the minimum of external connections would be nice to have in a new design, so that scaling up would be much easier. We wanted also to unify uh, the, um, uh, the ways of accessing devices uh, so that uh, adding new ones would be uh, easy. Uh, and uh, not only adding and setting up at first, but also prolonged maintenance uh, should be simplified as much as possible. Mm. And that's not only uh, these are not only the features that we uh, wanted to create in a new design. We also decided to uh, add a user interface, which was often requested by those who tried to reproduce SD Max board. For example, some uh, LEDs were suggested to us to indicate uh, current state of uh, the whole uh, system. Uh, with increasing demand for current measurements and for having metrics for power consumption on embedded devices, uh, we knew that it should uh, also be a part of the new system. Uh, and uh, since we uh, added uh, some new features, we decided that uh, writing a fake EDID to the HDMI of target devices would be a nice feature as well so that we won't have to attach actual displays uh, to target devices and still 
uh, devices will act as if they had one. Uh, with all those requirements, constraints, and features in mind, uh, we came up with uh, one size fits all hardware solution for uh, using it in a testing laboratory, which is a MoxPy board, uh, which you saw earlier, uh, and uh, which is rendered right here. But let me go to the uh, schematics of uh, components, which, uh, which can be found on the MaxPy boards. First of all, we started with a good old uh, micro SD card demultiplexer, since we didn't want to drop it entirely uh, from the concept. Uh, so one of the main feature is sharing access to the storage device, and of course, uh, being able to put the device under test into known state, which uh, is a nice saying of uh, shutting it off completely with cutting the power supply to the target device. We also added the UI, or other maintainers interface, which consists of multiple LEDs uh, for indicating status, uh, several buttons, and OLED display, uh, so that uh, maintainer can communicate with uh, target devices in laboratory without uh, any other hardware. And since we wanted to um, have more standalone approach at uh, this laboratory, uh, we have power control and current measurement uh, hardware on board, which is uh, all controlled by the NinoPi Neo uh, single board computer and a microcontroller on the board, sorry, uh, itself for controlling low-level uh, features. With that, uh, we've got uh, following functions uh, on this uh, device. Uh, first of all, switching access uh, for the micro SD card uh, and uh, putting the device under test into the known states. Uh, since some of the devices require some additional actions uh, to be rebooted, we also control uh, buttons and uh, jumpers uh, on the connected device. Uh, we, of course, have the hardware for uh, measuring current consumption. Like I said before, we may write fake EDID over HDMI connection, uh, and we provide uh, mm, any commonly used uh, interface to the uh, target device, such as uh, serial console, USB, uh, Ethernet, or just uh, the micro SD card for OS uh, deployments. Uh, and of course, a way of interacting with uh, administrator of the whole farm within a uh, testing laboratory. So as for the major improvements uh, in the setup, we finally got an independent uh, system for each target device, uh, which will not cause uh, more than single failure uh, if uh, the something uh, goes south. Uh, we've got a device that is aware uh, of its state uh, and can react uh, accordingly, uh, which is also easy to maintain uh, and is extensible from start uh, because we already knew that some uh, new requirements might uh, come up uh, during um, using uh, during usage of those pieces of hardware. Uh, so we uh, prepared for it. As for the indicators for working with uh, administrators, uh, we've got, uh, for, for example, SD, uh, micro SD card uh, reader LED and power LED. Uh, these were suggested by uh, mentioned area resin IO. Uh, and, uh, uh, some more LEDs for indicating status, as well as buttons and uh, the display for showing basic information about the status of the device itself. And as I said about extensibility, uh, there are situations where um, performing tests require some prototyping, uh, some additional hardware, 
since we didn't want to uh, solder and resolder again uh, all those boards, uh, they are already equipped with extension ports and uh, extension um, shields, such as the one uh, you see above, uh, might be used for a quick and easy uh, prototyping of additional features. If you would like to uh, use uh, such a solution in your own testing laboratory, uh, you should uh, get equipped with the NanoPi NEOS, uh, which can be bought for around uh, $10. Uh, the parts for all of uh, mm, all of the required parts cost around uh, $80, and uh, it depends actually on the uh, amount of uh, boards that you want to uh, produce. You also should have uh, high soldering skills and uh, really a lot of patience. Uh, but if it doesn't scare you off, go ahead to git.tizen.org and mm, make the best use of uh, this open hardware design. We uh, made a mono monolithic uh, attempt at solving the problem at hardware level, but uh, this also requires some software. Uh, this time we knew that the architecture of the whole solution uh, has to follow the Unix philosophy. So it, sh should, be, uh, it should be divided by layers and each layer should do one thing, one thing only, uh, but do it properly. All of the layers that uh, are in our uh, software uh, solution uh, communicate through uh, RESTful HTTP APIs, so it, uh, they might be easily replaced as long as the interfaces are fulfilled. And uh, currently we use the same technology for all of the layers in the stack, uh, which is uh, Go. With all that in mind, we had a few responsibilities uh, to give away. Uh, first of all, who knew what actually requires verification? Uh, in Slavic uh, legends uh, and mythology, uh, Perun, who is a character um, which, uh, who masters uh, lightnings, uh, is one of the main characters in Slavic uh, legends and uh, he's, he will be responsible uh, for uh, managing what actually needs verification, uh, what actions are necessary. Uh, for that, will be responsible Veles. Veles is another character from uh, Slavic mythology. He is the master of uh, afterworld, and he has to obey Perun. Uh, as for deciding where those tests can be run. Uh, this is the task for Boruta, and Boruta uh, is a caretaker for forests and all the living creatures uh, in, in forests. And uh, who will actually know how to do it? That's the work of our uh, hardware uh, solution, uh, a MOOCSPY. Uh, which does not uh, fit uh, in all those uh, Slavic uh, legend uh, naming convention, uh, but was designed and developed much earlier than our software solution. So to begin with uh, the basic, uh, le let's get back to the basic. The farm of the target devices uh, consists of multiple uh, max pies connected with actual uh, SBCs or mobiles or wearables, anything that is required for uh, being put under tests. And each MaxPy board uh, manages only single device under tests. Uh, it is uh, fully aware of all of its capabilities, like uh, if it has uh, actual display connected or not, which uh, interfaces does it provide, and still requires only two interfaces only power supply and network connection. So uh, adding another is uh, as easy as connecting those two. Uh, a layer above is uh, Boruta, uh, which uh, manages the whole farm uh, or 
uh, as we call them dryads, combination of MaxPy and device under tests. Boruta uh, schedules all the requests uh, for testing by priority, by uh, device groups, and also since it only gives the access to the device under test, uh, it can uh, delay uh, the access so that uh, if you have a test that has to be run but you don't want to interrupt uh, regular work of uh, uh, developers, uh, you may schedule it uh, to be run at night, for example. So uh, Boruta provides uh, pretty convenient access to selected dryads. A layer above uh, is Veles. Uh, Veles is often uh, depicted uh, with the head of a bull, hence logo, which is, uh, uh, for us, it's a lightweight testing framework which provides uh, similar to Lava interface based on uh, YAML uh, job definitions, which are then translated onto the uh, actions executed on device under tests. A test can be um, divided into several sections, for example, uh, operating system deployment, boot uh, of the uh, device itself, uh, actual testing and gathering the results. The highest uh, level layer, Perun, uh, is the actual testing system for the operating system images. It schedules their verification as soon as new set uh, is detected. And it is the one that actually automates the QA step I mentioned at the beginning of this talk, uh, which, uh, which actually performs the QA for release engineering duties or RED uh, for short. So with this layered approach, with uh, HTTP APIs between them, uh, we think that we kept uh, things as simple as possible. Uh, and even though we have a monolithic unified hardware solution, we kept the software as decoupled uh, as possible. So if you just need a unified way of interacting with your devices, you might simply uh, take the MaxPy, connect it, uh, and uh, use it uh, easily on the desk. If you would like to uh, connect uh, multiple ones, but already have the hardware uh, to between devices and uh, your farm, uh, you may drop it entirely and just use the Boruta for managing the whole farm. Of course, if you would like to use uh, MaxPice for access and uh, Boruta for uh, board farm management, but already have a uh, testing framework and, do not, and you do not want to migrate it to another one, you may safely replace the uh, Veles layer and use uh, only the bottom tool. And if you would like to use the whole stack, but decide that our uh, approach based on Go uh, might not be the best one, you may safely re-implement all those layers, for example, backend uh, in Java, uh, testing framework in Python and frontend in JavaScript, uh, as long as all the interfaces uh, are kept, everything should uh, go fine. And as for going forward, let me share with you uh, a short roadmap uh, of what we still have to do. From the hardware viewpoint, uh, we want to integrate the audio uh, I.O. on board, since uh, more and more uh, tests require uh, actual uh, gathering of uh, audio output. We also uh, are investigating the possibility for using USB Type-C since uh, it's uh, getting popular uh, among various mobile devices. Uh, and we also would like to provide the serial console on USB from the NanoPi to have the full access uh, for the board farm administrator. As for software, uh, we want to provide the web interfaces for all the current layers so that it would be much uh, even easier than it is with CLI today. Uh, we also want to have uh, persistence uh, in all those layers so that uh, any fail uh, between them 
would be uh, available uh, for recovery and provide uh, some more layers above the current stack uh, to simplify release engineering uh, uh, release engineering even further. If you would like to get the further details on the uh, on the uh, whole solution, uh, you may find them on uh, tizen.org wiki pages. Uh, if you would like to uh, get to know uh, the SDMAX uh, design and uh, our uh, lesson that we learned the hard way, you may find it uh, right there as well. If you would like some help uh, with the reproduction of uh, reproducing the uh, current design, uh, you uh, go ahead and uh, drop us a line on general uh, mailing list for Tizen.org or ask us directly on uh, Tizen channel on Freenode. To sum it all up, uh, with uh, this device and this uh, software, uh, we can quickly set up uh, new target devices. Uh, the maintenance of the whole farm is uh, much easier. We finally got all of the uh, responsibilities divided by various layers. Uh, execution of all of those tests can be made in parallel uh, pretty easily. And we finally got uh, the whole environment uh, unified. And uh, since we are integrating it uh, not only in uh, Samsung R&D Institute Poland, but also uh, in other Samsung institutes, uh, we've been pretty uh, happy with uh, it so far. Uh, grazie per l'attenzione. Thank you. Exactly asking for questions. Thank you for your uh, speech. Um, I have a question about uh, uh, what happens if the uh, MOOCSP board is detached from the upper layers. I mean, um, if I schedule a test, uh, the complete test is <laughs> developed on the uh, on the MOOCSP, and uh, the MOOCSP is able to complete it without any other connection to the upper layer. So when uh, the upper layer connects back, they get the, um, obviously the, the results of the, um, all the tests you have scheduled on the device, okay. on the d device under test. All right, so uh, let me uh, quickly describe how it uh, would go. Uh, the NanoPi on the MaxPi board uh, is a subscriber to the Boruta server. So uh, whenever you want to mm, connect another device to your board farm, uh, you have to uh, write the address for Boruto server first. Then uh, when it connects uh, to the network, it will subscribe for the mm, requests from Boruto. And if there is uh, any failure uh, in uh, communication between them, uh, it will be scheduled for uh, publishing uh, at the next available uh, attempt, uh, at the next successful attempt. So uh, if the connection is dropped, it will be mm, resent uh, after it is back online. Uh, that's uh, one of uh, the uh, features uh, we knew from the uh, failures with just a single uh, dispatch servers. Uh, if you... Uh, if you've got multiple devices connected to a single server and uh, some subsystem of uh, this server, such as USB, goes down, uh, every device goes down. Here, uh, we may uh, safely, for example, uh, reboot the NanoPi board. Uh, it will uh, have all the results uh, collected from the device under test, from the test run, and then resend them back uh, to the um, originator of this request. Uh, hi, uh, just two questions. Uh, first, uh, how many devices uh, are you handling right now? Uh, and, so far. Uh, oh, so far, so far. And the second question, uh, it's open hardware, but also the gods are open source uh, or Absolutely. not? Absolutely. Oh, okay. So uh, let me take it out of the stack. 
Uh, for the second question, uh, the design is open hardware and the software is already uh, being merged and published on git.tizen.org. So uh, uh, it will uh, still take uh, a few weeks to be uh, fully merged and published, uh, but it's an ongoing process and it will be available. And as for uh, the first uh, question, uh, so far we scaled it up to around uh, 100 devices, but have plans for bigger uh, testing laboratories. Sorry, but automatic testing is something I really, I'm really interested in. Um, the test in which language uh, must be written? I mean, uh, I think I, I think you're going to deploy on the Max P um, a script with a lot of test cases to be to be done on the device under test, and then you get back uh, the result one at a time or the whole batch in in a single message. I don't know, but uh, in which language which language you you use to. Um, uh, to, to, to write down the test script. All right, so uh, as for the uh, languages, uh, for the job definition, uh, we wanted to stay as close as possible to the current industrial standard, uh, which is Lava. So job definitions are simple YAML files, uh, and uh, since in Lava everything is uh, done through shell scripts, we followed that, uh, uh, that lead and uh, also currently provide uh, only availability for writing uh, your own shell scripts. Uh, some testing framework might be added uh, later on once uh, the whole uh, laboratory setup is, is already made. Any other question? Okay, so thank you, speaker, of which I cannot say the name uh, properly. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.